Hello. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Roman, and uh, today we're going to present you a project that we did with Ilya and Tal. Um, me and Tal are going to present it, and later on you're going to meet Ilya, uh, that is going to show you another project that he and Tal worked on. This was a little bit complicated. If you understood to this part, it's probably going to be simpler la later on. So let's start this project. Uh, the subject of our project is pulmonary nodal detection and uh, image retrieval. Okay. So one million people a year. This is the amount of uh, people that are uh, that die from lung cancer a year. Uh, we can actually use CT scans as, an, as a preliminary uh, examination to reduce this number considerably. The problem is, is just we don't have enough radiologists to go through the for the tests. Um, a test being very, very uh, uh, time consuming and sometimes even inconclusive. So what can we do to help our radiologists? Our project is comprised of two parts. The first part is going to build a detector network that is able to find noodles given a CT scan. And the second part is going to build upon that a retrieval system that given a suspicious CT scan uh, noodle, it is able to, to propose additional uh, noodles on different CT scans. And we're going to talk about the motivation for that later on during the presentation. OK. So we used uh, Luna 16 uh, as our data set. This was from an original uh, competition. The competition was in 2016 and closed to 2018. Uh, it, is con it contains roughly 1,000 CT scans and has rough, roughly 1,000 uh, tumors in it. So the things we have to know when we deal with this uh, type of data is that there are some challenges with it. Um, the challenges are that most of the research that has been done on, on visuals is, uh, has been made on 2D. Uh, its extension to 3D is somewhat uh, problematic. One of the basic challenges that we're facing immediately is our GPUs are already very congested with memory problem, with memory, with lack of memory. So extension to another dimension is very hard. Uh, this is to addition that uh, 3D is putting uh, more more strain on detection uh, by increasing the volume. So we have to take all of these things into account when we when we try to deal with this uh, with this data. Okay. So the first thing that we did is uh, research the, the original winger, winner from the, from the competition in 2017. And we found that, the, that what it took to win the competition in 2017 was an RPN, which is a region proposal network. And the basic architecture of this network is a unit, uh, a unit going uh, down in resolution and increasing filters up to a certain point, and, <clears throat> and then going back up again. The backbone of, of, this, uh, of this architecture is a res block used also in ResNets. We use the res block uh, because of its residual properties so that our gradients won't vanish or, uh, or explode. And the last function is cross entropy. So this was the basic architecture, but we didn't want to use the detector as it was in 2017. We wanted to approve it and bring it to a more of a state-of-the-art status. So we did a lot of paper reviews and found the recent advances that were made until the, until the recent time. And we've chose two improvements that we decided to incorporate into the detector model. So the first improvement was the use of focal loss. Focal loss will help us uh, by, by changing the loss function. That, uh, that is going to give less emphasis on, uh, on examples that are already well classified and putting more, more emphasis on examples that we don't yet classify very, very well. Uh, this will help us to, to cope with the highly imbalanced problems that we have, which is really overwhelming our detector. And the other method is a squeeze and excite layer. Uh, this is an improvement to the rest block that we're using. And uh, what, it, what it's doing basically is, uh, is putting different weights on the, on, the, on the filter that the CNN is learning, putting more weights on filters that are more, more uh, impactful for the detection and less weights on the, on the filters that are not. This has been originally used in ImageNet 2017, actually the winning paper, and it showed a lot of promise to, well, to improve the detector network. So what we did basically, we, we've enhanced our, our basic model with these two, uh, with these two features or, or improvements. 
And now we wanted to train a detector model, but we have to have some, some sort of a baseline for us to measure the, the performance of our, of, our, of our model. So what we did, we found uh, another paper that was published in April uh, 2019, which actually faced the same problem with the same data set and used some of the methods that we chose to use. And we've decided to use it as a baseline for, for our uh, detector model for us to establish its performance. Um, Okay, so what I'm gonna show you now is the performance of our model on the right compared to the, to the baseline network that, that, we, that we took from the paper. Uh, here you can see on the lower part that once we train the detector network, we, we've reached uh, a similar result as the paper. And um, let's just go through an example of what you can expect from the model because it is presented uh, not in a standard FROC measure, in an, rock curve, it is presented as an F rock measure. So what you can understand that um, given, given that uh, the doctor or the, or the radiologist is willing to accept an average of one false positive per scan, he's going to accept, uh, expect uh, a true positive rate of 93% in tumor detection. So at this point, um, I came to the conclusion that we have a, a detector we were feeling that it's state of the art and it was working properly, so we moved, uh, moved forward to examine its results. Uh, here are several examples. These are actually true positives. Um, the square being the, the original annotation in the data set and the circle being the, the detection from our model, uh, together with the radius and the probability that the detector is decided. Uh, here you can see some uh, false positives from the model. Um, we don't know why uh, the detector found them to be as such, but you can think to yourself and try to imagine why these small masses were, were uh, detected like this. Um, okay, so at this point, we trained the detector and we're ready to, we took it to a state-of-the-art status, and we're ready to build upon that a more advanced system that Tal will uh, show you right now. Thank you. Okay. So at this stage, we have a detector that for each CT scan shows the doctor a few nodules that were detected. We wanted to define another advanced problem to this project. We want to show the doctor not only those nodules, but also for each nodule, a few similar nodules. We assume that we have a database with CT scans and doctor's annotations, and we find the most similar nodules from it. What does it mean for two nodules to be similar? It means similar from the perspective of the doctors. Why is this important? So first of all, for each such nodule, the doctor can look on the opinion of other doctors about it, but also, and more importantly, he can look on the history of those cases and conclude something about the diagnosis of the current case. After re reviewing the literature on this topic, and after we didn't found uh, find uh, research that solves this problem using, uh, in 3D, we decided to go for it. The main idea of solving this problem is to take a 3D cube from the voxel space and present it in a semantic space that represents the opinion of the doctors. In this space, we would like two similar nodules to be close to each other and two unsimilar nodules to be far from each other. Ideally, this space should represent the opinion of the doctors, but how can we approximate it? We looked on the internet and uh, we found that the Luna 16 dataset is a part of other uh, more general uh, dataset which is called LIDC. In the LIDC dataset, there are not only the CT scans and the bounding boxes, but also uh, radiologists and notations for nine features. We explored the distributions of those features and we saw that only five of them are important. Okay, so we defined the similarity between two nodules as similarity in those annotations. Okay, we defined the similarity, let's build the model. But there is one important constraint that we should take into account. We have a very small number of samples. We know from the pack theory that 
the upper bound of the generalization error grows with the number of parameters divided by the number of samples. It means that if we will use a large number of parameters with this very small data set, we will probably face overfitting. So how can we solve a very complex problem using a very small number of parameters? Using transfer learning. But what model can we use for this transfer learning? Can we use ResNet, for example? So ResNet is a 2D model that was trained on ImageNet that knows nothing about medical imaging, so probably it will not work. But what another 3D model do we know that was trained on similar uh, problem, and maybe we've heard about it in the last 10 minutes? The detector. A recall about the detector. It takes a 3D cube uh, from the CT scan as an input, and it outputs five proposals that with high probability contain nodules. Uh, in this part, we use those nodules as input. We pass them through the pre-trained uh, network, and we add a few small layers on top of this. We would like to train a model that we, uh, will hopefully enable us to take, one, to take one of those layers as embeddings. The first approach that we tried was binary classification. For a pair of nodule and annotation vector, we would like the network to classify if they are similar or unsimilar. For each nodule, we use its own annotation vector as similar, and we randomly sampled from the other annotation vectors as unsimilar. It didn't work, uh, and we think that the reason was that the negative samples were not sufficiently different from the positive samples. So maybe we could improve this negative sampling, but we tried another approach. We trained a multi-label regression to predict those five annotations. It worked, and we, used, um, we decided to use this 10-dimensional vector as embedding because we believe that it captures info information both about the annotations, but also some visual information about the input. Okay, let's check our embedding vo vectors. Uh, for each nodule, we can calculate its embedding vector, but does this embedding space uh, capture the semantic meaning? So we plotted those embedding vectors in 3D using TSNI. And I remind you that the embedding vectors don't know the annotations of the, of the radiologists. We denoted each nodule by uh, its malignancy, just as a binary value of malignant or non-malignant. And you can see that uh, we have a group here of malignant nodules. If we will look on those malignant nodules by their malignancy level, you can see that the nodules with the highest malignancy level are close to the center of this group, and as the malignancy level gets lower, the nodules get far from this center. We also ran a hierarchical clustering, and we saw that the clusters uh, have semantic meaning. For example, this green cluster is a cluster of nodules with high malignancy. Okay, um, how did we choose the number of cases to show the doctor? We didn't just uh, pick a number. We introduced a score, which is basically an MSC that weighs more the malignancy feature and weights less cases with high disagreement between the radiologists. And you can see that the minimal score is at four or five, so we will show the doctor uh, four cases. Here is an example of this system. This is the query, and the system doesn't know the annotations of the radiologists, this, and it doesn't know this 3D mesh and those features values. It knows only the pixels from the CT scan. And you can see that the nodules that the algorithm found have shapes and, uh, and annotations which are very close to the query. In comparison, you can see this nodule, which is far from the query in the embedding space, and you can see that uh, its shape and the uh, annotations are different. 
Here is another example. This nodule have, uh, has high malignancy, and you can see that the nodules that the algorithm found uh, have similar shape, but also all of them have high malignancy. Okay, uh, so now that we, we have seen that the uh, output of our algorithm makes sense, let's uh, do one last check. We take the MSC score uh, function and we apply it both on the doctors and on our algorithm. Here you can see the distribution of the scores of the doctors. Uh, the lower score is better. And you can see this red line, which is the score of our algorithm. It means that the um, performance of our algorithm is comparable to the doctors. This means that when a radiologist uses this system, it is equivalent to him as a second opinion from another radio expert radiologist. To summarize, the field of radiology is in crisis. There is a, a lake of radiologists. Their time is very expensive. We developed a full pipeline system that given a CT scan shows the doctor a few nodules and for each nodule a few similar nodules. Such a system would hopefully improve both speed and quality of the diagnosis. Thank you very much.